Yelp, Yelp, Yelp. This problem involves calculating the activ activation energy for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide using temperature and rate constant data. So every time you raise the temperature for this particular process, the rate constant goes up. And so what we want to do is to correlate that in the form of a graph and find the slope. And the slope will help us to determine what the activation energy is. So the first thing to start off doing is to go to Excel. And what I've done here is just to make four headings for the temperature and the rate constant that they gave us. So you'll want to put that into two columns, right? Temperature and rate constant. And then you can see there's two more headings here for reciprocal temperature. And what we want to do is tell Excel that we want it to take and process that temperature data and take the reciprocal of it. So if you hit the equal sign, boop, and then this cell, okay, we want to make it 1 over that. So you just type it in like that and hit enter. All right. And what you can do is to just then highlight that. And if you just pull this down like this, it extends the same calculation for the, the next two temperatures. Oh, cool. All right, and then as you can see in this last column here, we want to take the natural log of the rate constant that was posted to us. So we will now tell it to do this function. And you can actually, if you don't know what the shortcut key for that is, you can just come up to here where it says f of x. And as you start to type in, you can put ln, and you can do a search for what different functions there are if you like so um, what I did this is on a Mac so it's a little bit different but if you just type in LN up it comes so that makes it convenient is all we need to do is to use that function as it says and LN of what well we can just take and in parentheses highlight this cell and so now it's going to take the natural log of what's in that cell And hit enter. Whee! Okay, and once again, just highlight this guy and pull it down, and it's going to extend the same operation to each one of these. And as you can see up here, it's telling me it's taking the natural log of the next cell here and the natural log of the next cell here. That's a relative address, and that's what makes Excel so useful. All right, so what we would like to do is make a plot of the natural log of the rate constant versus temperature, 1 over temperature, that is to say. And so let's uh, also use co the Excel to figure that out for us. So I'm just going to call this slope so I know what I'm doing in the next panel. And so that's what I'm going to have it do here. I'm going to tell Excel to take the slope of these points. And to do that, we're going to need to insert yet another function. So if we put equals and then slope it starts to come up there and it asks us to put the known y's and the known x's well in this case natural log of k is our y's okay and then comma known x's are the reciprocal temperature values excellent and if we hit enter we get the slope of the line through those points. Okay, well, that's a big part of this problem. But if we go back to what that slope is actually telling us, this is not the activation energy outright. If we go and take a look at what the slope actually tells us, if we make a plot of natural log of the rate constant versus reciprocal temperature, this is what we've just done. Uh, Excel has calculated for a best fit line through those points what the slope is and so this is what we're observing right now in our Excel file uh, but we need to doctor that up a little bit because that is the activation energy divided by uh, the gas constant R so what we need to do is to multiply it by that value of the gas constant and then flip it and make it positive 
because the activation energy should be a positive value. And so we can actually have Excel just change that ever so slightly to reflect that. So we're nearly there. What we need to do now is just to make another column, and we'll just call this the actual activation energy. I'll just call that E. Okay. And we need to tell Excel, first of all, that we're doing a function. So we hit equals. And we're going to take the value we just got for the slope. All right. That's useful. And we're going to take that times the gas constant. And so what we can do is to use an asterisk, and that will tell it to multiply. And that's 8.314 for the gas con constant value. And then because we want to flip this and make it positive, we can just go ahead and take that times negative 1. So another asterisk. And I'm just going to put negative 1 in here. And hit enter. Whee! And that is the activation energy for this reaction. And as far as activation energy goes, if we go back to our handy website, Uh, the activation energy is actually expressed either as joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. So if we go back to our Excel file, this is expressing it as joules per mole. It might be a little more convenient uh, to go ahead and change this to kilojoules per mole. And it's pretty easy to do that. We can just work with the calculation we've already embedded in there. So when I click on this up in my function panel, you can see it comes up there. And I'm just going to divide this whole thing by 1,000. And that's going to take me into kilojoules. And then the last thing is, I'm just going to round this to the nearest whole number. And so I have to tell Excel to do that. And so uh, if you're on a PC, you right click. I'm going to hit Control. And then from this drop down menu, you can't see it, but I'm just going to select Format Cells. And for number, I'm going to go with uh, a number. And I'm just going to tell it to round it to zero decimal places. And there we go. So that is the activation energy, and I'll label it here in kilojoules. Per mole. Now we have a file that we can use for the calculation of temperature and rate constants data to determine the activation energy for a reaction.